Prime Spruins, and welcome back to another episode of FTB Beyond. Last time we got started, and I don't know the difference between F3 and F5, uh, I went mining a little bit. I got enough lapis to put fortune on this pick, and once I was able to do that, I went back and mined all the diamonds that I had previously passed over, and I also made a lumber axe as well. Uh, you can see I got quite a bit of cobblestone. I've been keeping it in this compacting drawer on um, just other random little things. I did find a zombie spawner, so that's pretty cool. And let's see what else. Yeah, so here's all here's all my goodies. I got 39 diamonds and quite a bit of coal and redstone and a bunch of other random stuff. Obviously, I had more lapis, but it all went to the fortune pick, uh, which is fortune three now, so that's good. And yeah, got just a bunch of random stuff. Uh, so really the reason why so much time has passed since the last episode is I've been doing a little bit of farming and pretty much just waiting on these things to grow and it is a little bit laggy. Uh, you might notice a little bit of frame rate drop right here. I'm not really sure why. Uh, I think it could be the fact that I'm using these worms instead of water. Uh, so the worms are an actually addition thing. Whenever you hoe any type of land. I'm not sure if it has to be grass, um, but whenever you hoe land you have, I think it's a 5% chance. I think it actually says the worms if we look up the, let's see, recipe um, for more information. Okay, it doesn't actually say. It must be on the uh, wikia page that I read about that. But yeah, you place them down and they hydrate until a 3x3 three three area, so you don't even have to use a hoe. You just put them down and 3x3 three three area is hydrated and tilled. You can see this one is currently unhydrated because it's right next to this guy. It will be soon, like that one was. Well, this one's taking a little bit longer. And they're also supposed to help increase growth rate, so things grow a little bit faster as well. Uh, so that's why I have these guys here. And also, you know, you can kind of customize the size of your gardens and your plots that you want. Uh, so over here we don't quite have enough room for you know another full nine by nine plot uh so just putting these like so fixes that and i i didn't want a, a full nine by nine plot um and of course i believe it's agricraft you can just right click to harvest like so and you can do that for everything and i've just been keeping all the stuff over here so why these three you may ask well obviously cotton for strings and um wool and I have uh, cucumbers and lettuce. So cucumbers and lettuce I've been using to make the spring salad. If you look at the recipe for spring salad, it's super easy and there are a ton of ways to make it. Um, you can use lettuce with either carrots or onions or radish. Um, I've decided to use cucumbers just as one of the first things that I saw that I had in my inventory randomly. Uh, so use that, you put them together in a crafting grid with a cutting board. You of course get the cutting board back and yeah, it gives you spring salad and I have a ton of it and it actually um, gives you quite a bit more hunger than, for example, steak. So you can see here, um, hunger bars, one, two, three, four and a half. And then um, that at the bottom is saturation. So it gives you a full saturation. So steak gives you only four and not full saturation. Okay, I don't know if that saturation is actually full. Um, it looks like it is. But steak, steak gives you quite a bit, and this gives you, like, I believe that's all. Um, anyway, it, it's still better than steak, and it's a lot easier to make. I mean, I already have a ton of this stuff. 491 cucumbers, 402 lettuce. And so, yeah, I don't have to go around and kill animals and then cook them and waste coal. This is all that I have to do. Just come out here and harvest this occasionally. So, yeah, eventually this will be automated. Um, and I also have a tree farm over here. I'm not sure how long I'm really going to need this, but they're all growing now. And of course I have the lumber axe. So all I have to do, chop one down and we don't have fast leaf decay, unfortunately, but it's not really a problem. Um, usually what I'll do is just come out here and cut these all down, go and do some other things like, uh, harvest these plants, then come back and just collect all the saplings or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I've really done since last time. Uh, I did add a kind of an automated way to do this. I mean, it's really simple automation, but 
throw in silver or whatever that I want to smelt and it'll go into the hopper and then go directly into the smeltery. So that way I can have a bunch of stuff because the smeltery only holds, you know, so much. Um, and then of course I added the redstone clock, uh, a lever to turn on and off. So once it gets smelted, it'll automatically be cast into ingots. That's what we got so far. I think I have a few more ores to take care of as well. Yeah, we still got nickel and I don't know what that is. It's from Tech Reborn. Let's see, uses. Uh, so can we smelt it? Oh, it turns into nickel. What? Uses? Pulverize nickel. Okay, so I guess maybe the system thinks that it's nickel. Yeah, I guess the system thinks that it's nickel. So it's like, or dictionary nickel. Anyway, um, and then this stuff can also be, not recipe uses, this stuff can also be smelted, I believe, yes. I don't know if you can actually put it in the Tinker's Construct smeltery, uh, because these don't cast into ingots, they cast into resonating plates. Or they uh, turn into resonating resonating plates rather anyway uh so yeah today i think i mentioned in the last episode i might want to start with batania and that's something i've never done i know a lot of people do uh do that but it's something i've yet to do so what is the first thing we need at batania yeah the lexica batania we should probably craft one of those so a book and a any kind of plant really do i have a book I have this. I don't know if that'll work. Um, don't want to use these. Those are botany flowers that you find in caves. They're a little bit more difficult to come by. Um, so I don't really have a book or leather. Yeah. Um, let's sleep. We'll see if this enchanted book works. I don't think that it will. But I really don't have any use for it. And where did my shovel go? My nice makeshift dirt door. Um, I believe I was keeping all of my plants and stuff out here. Let's just use a sapling. I hear a zombie. Alright. Job well done. Where did that sapling go? There it is. Alright. Nope. Alright, so... How can we make a book? Do we absolutely need leather? No, we do not. String, paper. Hmm. Blank pattern, string, and three paper. I don't know if I have... I do have sugar cane. And string. I don't know how many. One, two, three. How do we make string with this? Three across. And how much does that give us? Not recipe uses um uses please string three across it just gives us one okay all right so that'll give us two and then the other thing we should have right over here blank patterns all right crafting table there's one out there but whatever there's this, and then three paper, book, 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 book. All right, and then you only get two paper back from a book. Anyway, Alexica Batania, cool. So let's check this guy out. Uh-huh, 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 anyway. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and run around the world and try to collect as many flowers as I can, but I should probably empty my inventory first. Alright, I spent some time collecting some flowers, and you can see what I got here. Um, I also collected a little bit of saplings and some other random stuff. I also found a, a non-forestry beehive and had a queen bee from... This is a Pam's Harvest Craft bee... Uh, so uses for it we can get royal jelly which we can use for we can use a bee grub to make a queen bee i'm not sure if uh pam's harvest craft has like a bee system similar to forestry 
no idea, but I decided to grab it anyway. Um, yeah, and I also took the opportunity to kind of explore a little bit. And you can see here's where we are. And we are surrounded by mostly savanna and desert, which isn't really the best place to find flowers, uh, uh, especially not the desert. Um, so I did explore all of this area down here. Um, and over here is where we start getting some plains and forests and stuff. There's a village over here too. Nothing too interesting there. Um, but yeah, I think I might want to relocate at some point. I'm not really a big fan of all this savanna and desert area. But whatever. First, let's grab... I think we need... I know we need the Petal Apothecary. Let's go back and refer to the manual again. Go to... Back, back, back. Petal Apothecary. Uh, so, all kinds of reading, more reading, alright, so we need slabs and a petal, and we do, do we still have, we have our petals on us, that's great, and my inventory is a mess already, so petal apothecary, it's like that, that, like this, and a petal. Petal Apothecary, great. Uh, so let's go out and... I really need to get a real door, don't I? Um, let's go out here and find a good spot for this. Um, I'm thinking like right back here. That's fine. Uh, we might also want to bring a permanent water source. And right there. There we go, good. So now we can continually do this. Um, so yeah, first of all we need to make a pure daisy. And it's all, it's all in the book. I already know this. I've done Batania a little bit before in the past. Uh, let me clean up my inventory a little bit first. Alright, so we need to make a pure daisy. Uh, so to get this started, let's go ahead and I like to stand up here. And this is how you do the Batania recipes. You throw in the required petals and then you need a seed. And of course it takes water, obviously. Um, I already have the pure daisy recipe right here. So this is all we really have to do. Um, so, Q, 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 and then throw in a seed, and we'll get our pure daisy. So then we can put a water bucket in and um, get ready to do this again. Um, there used to be, used to be a, like an option to like um, do the same thing that you just did with the click of a button. I think it's like shift left click or shift right click or something uh, looks like they might have removed that feature but that's no big deal uh, I wanted to make at least two of these pure daisies so we have that and then hopefully these two stacks or two half stacks of wood and stone should be enough to get us going uh, so basically you want to put a um, pure daisy down and then have wood or stone surrounding them like so and after waiting just a little while these will be transformed into living wood and living rock although I think this might have to actually be smooth stone because it's not getting particle effects uh, yeah I'm pretty sure it has to be smooth uh, so let me go ahead and correct that all right, um, so I checked out the recipe for Living Rock. Interestingly, you can use andesite or uh, see regular smooth stone. You can also use andesite, granite, and diorite, so that's pretty cool. I like that option. I don't have to process my cobblestone. Um, you can see the living wood has already transformed, so let's go ahead and grab it. And we should see very shortly this should be transforming. Let's go ahead and put down some more wood here. And uh, first things first, we should probably make a wand. So a living wood twig. Let me see. Full recipe for wand is we take twig. Oh, we need three of them and two petals. And we can use any kind of petal that we want. Uh, but there, there you go. You can see transforming into living rock. And with living rock, we can make a mana pool. Uh, so the mana pool, mana pool, I believe they, they still have the diluted mana pool. 
um, but you no longer need it as a first stage to get to the regular mana pool. Diluted mana pool is just if you need like a small amount of mana for some reason. Um, but we'll want to make the mana pool. And yeah, we'll get into that in just a moment. So let me craft these few things and I will be right back. Alright, so I have the mana pool, I have my wand, I went with lime and purple because those are two of my favorite colors. Anyway, um, now we need to start filling this mana pool with mana. Let's go over here and collect our living rock first. That should be the last of it. Do I have any? Okay, yeah, so I wanted exactly half a stack. Uh, we'll get into making more soon, I'll probably make like a 9x9 nine nine of pure daisies and just do it like that much at a time. Um, of course that's off camera work. Anyway, uh, so uh, first thing we need it looks like a mana spreader and I believe it's something like this. No, it's actually like this. Perhaps it's like this. There we go. Mana spreader. Alright, that will help uh, collect the mana that we're going to generate. So I was looking through the Lexica Botania and it looks like these Hydroangias, or however it's pronounced, looks like a pretty good way. Uh, we need mystical blue petals, two of them per, and two mystical cyan petals. So I already went ahead and got them. You can see them on my inventory, on my hotbar. Uh, let us go ahead and craft them. So QQ, QQ, there we go, cool. That, that. And I really wish they didn't get rid of that mechanic that lets you do it instantly. Oh, right click with an empty hand. Ah, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, there we go. And then all you have to do is Q and the... Huh, I wonder why it didn't show up the first few times. Anyway, yeah, awesome. Great. Okay, so now we have the four Hydroangias. Um, so, again, Lexica Botania has a, yeah, uh, we can use all these for generation. The day blooms are gone, which would just passively generate with sunlight. Um, they did decay over time, so, but yeah, it's, it's gone from this pack. Um, uh, anyway, so if we take a look here and read, it has kind of a suggestion of the way to place a Hydroangia setup. So we're going to do just that. It looks like three by three and we'll just make it out of cobblestone doesn't really matter I mean we're this definitely isn't going to be a permanent setup but all right uh, so three by three just clear this out real quick uh, two three and then three over here all right and then we fill this up with water sources uh, so we do have an infinite source over here. Let's see if we can create all of these uh, as infinite sources, like so, like so, all right? All right, that's infinite. And next, hydroangias. Doesn't feel like I'm saying that right, so excuse me if I'm not. Anyway. Uh, so next, let's put down the mana spreader. All right, so like that, and it doesn't matter which direct it, uh, direction that it's facing currently, we can always change it. Let's get out our wand, and let's see, I think we want to right click. Yeah, and you can see it's filling up with mana. Then if we, I believe, shift right click, and then regular right click. No, maybe shift right click, and then shift right click again. Yeah, that will connect them. You can see that the mana spreader is shooting its mana, it's just firing off into space. That's not good. Um, we want to send that to a mana pool, so we're just going to put it right there. And you can see that because it's hitting it, the mana is actually going into the pool. And we can see it the same way that we see this filling up. Well, it's empty now because it's sending all of its mana to the spreader. And you can see the mana spreader fills up and then after a while shoots its mana into here and this is slowly filling up as well. I think we can also shift right click this and shift right click again to lock it on directly to this. 
So if we had it somewhere else, we could change the direction that it was shooting. Uh, does that work? Yeah, well, anything that we shift right click on, it'll start shooting its mana too. We want it to shoot it at the pool. Uh, so again, let's connect all these guys. The heck was that? Um, function mode, bind mode. Uh, so if we shift right click without looking at something, it looks like we change its mode. Um, we also make sure that we want to be looking at the actual hitbox. So this one's hitbox is definitely not indicative of where the plant actually is. But anyway, shift right click, shift right click. And let's just do that again, because what the heck was going on there? All right, that should reach. Might be too far away, because it has a little X over it. Hmm. What I could do, this is interesting. Uh, I think we'll lose the mana here if I break this right now. But it should be okay. Mana spreader. Mana spreader up there. Shift right click. Shift right click. All right. Now shift right click this into that. Good. It's connected. And if that one connects, the rest of them should also connect. Good. 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 Awesome. So all of these are um, taking mana from the still this uh, water and putting them into the spreader and the spreader is sending it to the pool. That's great. Uh, so according to Lexica Botania, these will decay after one hour, uh, real time, real world, one hour. So it should be three days, I think. Three Minecraft days. And yeah, uh, let me just clean this up a little bit. And that is that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Let me just see there's anything we can craft that I wanted to test out. I did want to see if we get like a Horn of the Wild. Uh, Horn of the Wild, we need pasture seeds, grass into the mana pool. It doesn't say exactly how much mana it takes. Um, it does show like a little tiny visualization. Do we have that much mana yet? It doesn't look like it. Um, Horn of the Canopy. Oh, we need a Horn of the Wild. And yeah, I want to see if we can use the horn of the canopy, if that will give us uh, saplings when we use it, because that way I could quickly acquire saplings. Um, I'm also not sure. I think if we use the horn of the wild, it might take out these crops. But if we put them on crop sticks from Agricraft, I don't know if it'll take those out, too, because um, it'd be nice if we can just use the uh, the horn of the wild to kind of help us with harvesting this stuff. Um, so... Yeah, let's do that before we end the episode. Now, let's see if we can get the pasture seeds or whatever they were called. Yeah, pasture seeds. We need two of them. All right, awesome. So that's how mana conversion works. You you can convert all kinds of things um, with mana infusion. Uh, some, some things you need a catalyst, an alchemy catalyst for, which is a little bit more advanced than where we're at right now. But there are a lot of things you don't need. You can throw a bottle and get mana in a bottle. It's convenient. A potato, you get a tiny potato, glass, um, mana glass, and so on. Some things are will help you craft stuff for the mod. Other things are just extremely convenient. Um, but yeah, uh, something to look into later. Let's actually go inside because it's getting dark. All right. And now let's craft a horn of the wild. Hopefully I have enough living wood. Um, we need two. Horn of the Wild. Okay, two. Then let's make one a Horn of the Canopy. All right. And we will equip them. So the Horn of the Canopy has the little green dot specks on it. I'll have to remember that one. Uh, horn of the Canopy. So do we get saplings? That's pretty much the whole point, and I did pick up that. Okay, that's loud. But yes, we do get saplings. That is excellent. So now I don't have to worry about waiting for these to, um, you know, de despawn their leaves because we don't have fast leaf decay. All right. So this is probably going to be loud too. So I apologize. All right. So yeah, it looks like it is removing the uh, base plant as well. So what if... This could turn out really bad. So it looks like it doesn't even touch 
anything that's on a crop stick. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. That was really the main reason that I wanted to make one was to see if that would work. I guess it doesn't. Um, I mean, you can also use these for, you know, cutting the grass, um, clearing out an area. So that, that's definitely still helpful. Um, the horn of the canopy is super useful though. But anyway, I need to now clean all this stuff up and that's going to be it for this one. I'm going to let this mana pool continue to fill up. It's a pretty slow process. Um, I might look at trying to expand this if I can. I'm not sure if I'm going to. I'm not really sure if we're going to need that much mana uh, this early on. Uh, if I do, I'll probably just add like another one of these setups like over here and maybe over here and maybe in front of it. So I have like four mana spreaders and four of these systems total going directly into a mana pool. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Either way, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.